Hi guys, it's John here and I've just got a quick update because the S22 Ultra has finally had its sort of day one release patch. So we can see here we're going to be on the March security patch and the improvements here are apparently overall stability of functions and obviously device stability and bug fixes, new and enhanced features, further improvements to performance. So this is the bit we're mainly interested in the performance improvements because I know a lot of people were saying that the performance of the release firmware was not so good. So the day one patch is here, so I've installed it already. So I'm gonna go through the tests as we did last time. We'll go through Geekbench to start with and see if there have been any improvements at all. And then we'll just see if the new update has helped. So again, we can monitor the temperature in the top right of the screen here, and we'll go through the CPU benchmark first. Okay, so the scores are in and we're not really too interested in the 2100 this time around, but we can see obviously score 1086 and 3127. But the interesting thing here is that the single and multi-core are actually slightly different from the previous test. So the single core has gone down by about 0.7% from the initial firmware. And the multi-core has also gone down. So we were up at 3738, we're now down to 3675. So that's actually another decrease here for the CPU test. Now I know that last time someone pointed out that the ray tracing test here was worse on the 2200. So we can see here ray tracing on the 2100 is 5756 compared to just 1768 on the 2200. So I'm going to say that that's probably the fact that Geekbench doesn't really know the CPU yet. So it's not actually testing the full capability of the 2200. I could be wrong, but that's my initial guess at least. So we'll move on to the compute test now anyway and see how they both do there. Okay, so compute scores are in now and we've gone down to 8856. We were up at 9270 before in the initial firmware. So we've actually lost just over 4% of performance here in the latest firmware. So I'm certainly not very happy with that. I mean, as far as I was aware, the update was meant to improve things, not make things worse. But anyway, I'm gonna let them cool down a bit now and we'll move on to the Antutu benchmark test. Okay then, Antutu next, and we can see the scores from last time, so let's hope we don't get another worse score here on the 2200.
Okay, so the Antutu benchmark is finished and we've gone from a score of 934.838 to 945.587. So it's a, about 10,000 points increase, about 1%. So nothing too huge and nothing too uh, impressive particularly. But we can see here as we go down the various parts of the test, we do at least see now that the user experience score has improved. So in the previous test, we noticed that the 2100 actually beat the 2200 on its user experience score. So let's just go through here and check the various results if you wish to. So we were beating the 2100 with the 2200 on the first two here, data security and data processing but the next ones in the list were being beaten by the 2100. So we are now getting higher scores for image processing. User experience is still a bit behind the 2100. We've got 32,000 versus 34,000. And the video decode is also slightly lower than the 2100. So not massive improvements here, but we do at least get a small improvement in the overall score. So we can see here that the CPU went up by about 9.1 degrees, so it's not overheating or anything. We've got a maximum of 34.6, and we lost 6% battery during the test. But I will let them cool down a bit now, and we will then move on to the stress test, and then we can compare that to the January firmware and see how it compares. Okay, so we're down to a more reasonable temperature on both here, 28 and 26. So let's start off the 15 minute stress test again. Here are last month's results. We're gonna do test again and go for 15 minutes. Okay, so the stress test has just finished, and I'd say in comparison to the last benchmark, there hasn't really been much change at all. You can see it's very, very similar to the previous test, even dipping down towards about 45 at the same time. So yeah, nothing really to talk about here. I don't think there's been any improvements whatsoever for the stress test, at least. Okay, next up we have the wildlife test, so we're gonna run through this and then the slingshot test as well. Okay, so the wildlife test has finished and we can see we've gone down to 7472 compared to the last firmware where we had 7594. So definitely getting worse as time goes on. We can have a look quickly at the battery and frame rate here. So we've basically lost another percent or just over a percent of performance in the latest update. Let's just move straight on to the slingshot test. Okay, so the slingshot test has just finished, and we can see, again, comparing to the previous firmware's results, we're not really seeing a markable improvement at all. 
we were at 104.63.67, so a bit of uh, extra on the physics test part one. 39 versus 40, and they were both 23 last time. So I'd happily say, or not happily say, I would certainly say though that there doesn't appear to have been much improvement, if any, over the last firmware. So I have got the Thermal Guardian installed and maxed out on both, just to let you know. So this is maxed out as much as it can do. So it's really just a case of the XR2200. I'd say it still has a long way to go before it becomes as good as the 2100 has now become. Now don't forget when the 2100 first released, it did score some pretty abysmal results in its first few months. And over time, Samsung did improve the chip and it is now running, like I said before, at the best it probably has ever done. Now I'm not making excuses for Samsung. The 2200 is obviously something that everyone was expecting to you know, completely blow the competition out of the park. Maybe not necessarily the Snapdragon competition, but at least really show the 2100 how things are done. Now, personally, I'm not particularly worried about it. At the end of the day, it's just a phone. So as long as games run well, then that's the main thing. The other thing to note, obviously, is that games aren't currently optimized for the 2200. So that is gonna need developers to optimize their games and allow the 2200 to actually run things at a decent rate. For example, if we go into PUBG, we'll see that the current settings that we can select and the graphics are quite minimal at the moment. Same with COD and same with Fortnite. So we can see here in PUBG, like I was saying, you can only select smooth and high currently, and the highest resolution you can actually go to is HD with high. So this is to be expected when a new chipset releases. You've got to wait for the developer to add support for the new chipset before you can uh, you know, get the max out of it. So this is probably just a generic setup that any phone can use with these settings. And like I say, until Tencent, until Epic, and everyone else updates their games, Activision for COD, you are gonna just be stuck with some default, pretty poor settings in the games. This is exactly the same for the 2100. It was the same for the S20. It was the same for the S10 as well. So I've seen this over the years. It is just what happens, sadly. As frustrating as it is, you do have to wait for the developers to update their games. So again, like I said, it's as frustrating as it is. This has been happening for years with mobile phones. I did point out in the comments in my previous video that my I remember my N97 from Nokia was meant to be the biggest, best new phone on the market and it released with huge numbers of bugs, all sorts of GPS problems and it was absolutely terrible. It was almost unusable. And after about three or four months of updates, it became somewhat usable, not amazing. But yeah, this has been going on for years and years since the dawn of smartphones really. And since the ability of being able to update your phone over the air, especially, companies do seem to maybe rush things out, I'm not sure, because they know that they can release an update further down the line, which will fix things. It's the same in the gaming world. You get games released with big bugs and uh, all sorts of issues, and they fix them with a day one patch. Now, these issues haven't necessarily been fixed, if they could even call them issues. Maybe the performance has not been fixed for the 2200. I am still expecting more than this. So it'll be interesting to compare it to the Snapdragon as soon as that one arrives. That probably won't arrive till mid-March, sadly, as it is coming from Hong Kong. So it's gonna arrive in a couple of weeks or so, and then we can compare it to the 2200 here. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so you are notified when the Snapdragon comparison is out. And if you have any comments, leave them down below. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.